Hello, my name is Sarah Wilmoth. I am a student at West Virginia Wesleyan, um, and I'm gonna be interning here for the next about month and a half. Um, I'm really excited to work with the youth group and to help with Sunday services and all the normal workings of a church and just get some ministry experience before I head to seminary next year as I continue uh, to discern my own call to ministry. So I'm really excited to be here and um, I think it'll be fun. Good morning, and welcome to Force for Death this morning. We're so happy that you've joined us. Know that we are missing seeing you here with us in the fellowship that we have. We hope that you've had a wonderful and blessed week, especially as we are all beginning our preparations for celebrating our Christmas season and holiday here in just a very few short weeks. But before we begin, we have a couple of announcements I just want to point out to you and remind you so that you don't forget. First of all, our Christmas tree, our angel tree. We do still uh, want to make sure that you remember that December 15th, we need the gifts back. We need them unwrapped, but in their boxes, ready to wrap. So don't forget those. Also, we are, just like Thanksgiving, we are collecting money for Christmas food baskets. So if you'd like to contribute towards that, we would like to receive the money for those by December 15th as well. And finally, 
There are still copies available of Robbie Parsons' book. If you want to use that for devotions for this Christmas season, that would be an awesome thing to do. So now as we begin our service, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worships. Will you pray with me? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of Advent and the time that it gives us to reflect upon our Lord Jesus Christ and the hope that his birth brings to us. Jesus, we thank you for your life's example of obedience and humility and the promise of peace that we have through you. Help us to share this message of hope and peace with those around us so that they too can experience the comfort in knowing that our God is in control and one day you're coming back for us. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Advent scripture reading for today comes from Micah 5, verses 4 through 5. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Sometimes in this busy world we live in, it's gratifying to find a few moments of peace and quiet. Even if such moments are brief, there comes with such moments a sense of renewal. We all need to experience moments of peace from time to time. Such moments give us the opportunity to take a deep breath and know that our Lord is with us. Peace is a beautiful word, word that not only means calm or quiet, but it also means freedom from contention or war. One day when Jesus returns, all contention will cease, all wars will end, and those who love him will never fight another battle. But until then, we can always experience peace when we enter into the quiet presence of God and listen for the sound of God's voice. That voice is calm and assuring. That voice will always bring you peace. Today, we light the candle of peace.
Good morning. Would you like to join me again by the fire today? It's good to see you today. Last week, we unwrapped our package of hope. And if you were listening to the candle lighting, today we have the package of peace. And like Sarah said, peace isn't just peace and quiet. It means that you have everything that you need. So let's see what could be in our package today. Oh, I hear that paper. You always have good paper. If you have paper, it's a good gift, right? All right. Oh, what is this? It's a blanket. But guys, this just isn't any old blanket. This is my old blanket. This is the blanket I played with when I was little. I remember wrapping up in it and being a princess. I remember making it my tent. I remember it being my safe place. It's the thing that I always had with me when maybe I needed to feel some peace. So peace kind of is like a blanket. It wraps us up, it surrounds us, it makes sure that we have comfort, but also that knowing in our head that everything will be okay, even when it feels like it won't. And guys, that's exactly what peace is. Peace, you just can't understand it sometimes, but it surrounds you and wraps you up, and you know it's always from God when you feel that peace. All right, my friends, let us pray. Dear God, thank you so much for your peace that wraps us up, comforts us, makes us feel okay when the world isn't. God, we can never understand your peace, but we know that it is a gift to us, and we are so thankful for this blessing. Help us to spread your peace everywhere we go this season. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Good morning, church. <clears throat> we are so grateful that you have joined us today, and as we come to this time of prayer, I have several things I would like to lift up to you today, beginning with the fact that Diana Allen's mother, Lois Jones, who lives in an assisted living facility, has just tested positive for COVID-19. So please keep Lois in your prayers. Also, we want to remember Marianne McClure's daughter, Vicki Spurlock. Vicki, as you know, recently had kidney and liver transplant. Uh, that was back on November 10th. And <clears throat> since that time, she's been in a place called Gabriel House of Care, but uh, just this week has had to move back to the hospital because of some complications. So please keep Vicki in your prayer. She has waited so long for these transplants and our sincere prayer is that everything goes very well for her and that she will soon be fully recovered and on this road to healing. So keep Vicki in your prayers. Also, we wanna to continue to lift up Cindy and Clarence Woodworth. Uh, Cindy is home, as you know. Clarence remains in the hospital, but hopefully only for a few more days. He's seeing good improvement, and so we're grateful for that. Also, we want to lift up Barbara Holdren Adkins in the loss of uh, her youngest son, Ben. Please keep Barbara in your prayers. I know that she and all the family will appreciate that very much. Lee Long. Uh, has requested that we pray for her Aunt Maxine Calhoun. So let's remember Aunt Maxine in our prayers this day. And also we have some praises. Becky Brogren, Brogan has a new great-granddaughter, and this is her first, and so everything went very well, and we're excited about that. We're also excited to share with you that Mike Gibson is now home. He is uh, doing much better, and we are so thankful for all the prayers that have been lifted up for Mike and Pam, as both of them have been suffering from COVID-19. And Mike is home, and we're so grateful for that. So God is good, and God is doing great things in the lives of so many people, and we're thankful for that. So at this time, I know that many of you at home and watching wherever you are may have something on your heart that you are lifting up in prayer this day, this week, and we pray with you, even though we may not know what your request is. We are grateful that we have a God who hears all of our prayers and answers our prayers and will be there for us each and every day. So will you join me in this time of prayer? Almighty God, what a joy it is to come before you once again this day. Oh yes, Lord, things are certainly different. And while we're not able to gather here yet in person, we are so thankful that many are watching. Many are participating. And we're thankful, Lord, that even though things are so much different. The ministry of this church has not stopped. As we have witnessed here this morning through this beautiful music, we are grateful, Lord, that there are those who are still willing to share their gifts, their talents with us to make these services so special. Lord, we are grateful for the many ways in which you have blessed us in this time. And while, yes, it is trying, yes, it creates worry and difficulty, we know, Lord, that we can look to you any time, day or night, and you will always be there for us. For this we are eternally grateful. Today, Lord, as we gather here in this service, we are mindful of all these requests that have been made here this day. And we do want to lift up Lois Jones in our prayers. We want to lift up Vicki in our prayers. Cindy and Clarence. We lift up Barbara. And Lee's aunt, Maxine. And Lord, we thank you for the birth of a great grandchild a beautiful granddaughter who will be a blessing to this dear family. 
and for Mike being home, we are so thankful for that. It truly is good news. And Lord, as we worship you this day, I know that there are many more needs among us, needs that have not been yet shared. We continue to lift up Harold Stewart in the loss of his brother. We are grateful that Harold is right here with us this day, making it possible for you to hear what's going on. And Lord, we pray for Margie Vietz and, and the loss of her father. And we pray, Lord, for so many others who have had difficulties in this time. Lord, we are so thankful you are with, with us this day, that you are surrounding us with your loving arms and giving us that peace that passes all understanding. And today, as we focus on the peace that you bring, <clears throat> we are so grateful for a quiet moment like this when we can just simply reconnect with you and know that you are God and know that you love us and will never let us down. Now, Lord, bless us this day. And thank you for all those who are making this possible to be able to reach out to so many people in an hour such as this. And for all this, we give you thanks in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen.
Will you hear God's word as I read the scripture from Mark? The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will pre prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism, baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God sent John the Baptist to be a voice crying out in the wilderness to prepare the way of the Lord. And indeed, that's just what he did. Now that voice would be so significant because it would call upon all people to receive a baptism that was so special, a baptism of repentance that would allow them to be forgiven of their sins. And many did believe. And many were baptized in the River Jordan. But that voice would also remind us that someone greater than John was coming. His name would be Jesus. And John would admit at one point that he wasn't even worthy to bend down and untie his sandals. Now, just a few moments ago, we lit the candle of peace. And you might think of this scripture and say, what is so peaceful about this? Because I can only imagine that when John arrived on the scene, <clears throat> being that voice, crying out in the wilderness, it wasn't a soft voice. <clears throat> it wasn't a voice that you could barely hear because he was excited. He wanted all the world to know that Jesus was coming. And even Jesus' arrival on the scene there just before his ministry would begin may not have been all that peaceful. Oh yes, it had its moments. Moments like when the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. Moments in the wilderness as he contemplated <clears throat> the ministry to which God had called him. <clears throat> but soon thereafter, there may not have been much peace because so many people, large crowds began to gather around Jesus and they were all making their request for healing and others were challenging Jesus to try to trick him or trap him in some way that his ministry might end. But the important thing for us to remember this day is that what Jesus brought to us is the greatest gift of peace we could ever receive because what he offers is forgiveness. What he offers is a way of life that is filled with meaning and purpose. What he offers is unconditional love. Oh, I love that. Unconditional love. Give it to each and every one of us. And if you've ever had the privilege of experiencing any one of those things, then you know what peace is all about. 
Now, peace is a remarkable word. <clears throat> Often when I think of peace, I think of words like calm or quiet or tranquil. Those words seem to come to mind whenever I think about what peace is. And I've discovered over the years that there are times in my life when I need peace, when I just need to enter into a quiet time where I can focus, where I can be renewed, where I can listen to the voice of God and know that when I hear that voice, there's renewing strength in that moment of peace. But I've also discovered there are times when I need to experience a peaceful place, a place where I can be free from the distractions of life, at least for a little while, so that I genuinely can focus on God and that renewal that God brings. Peace is a remarkable word. And that word also reminds us that there's another meaning. And that is that there is a meaning to peace that shows us a more remarkable way. When all strife is ended, when all war and contention is past, then we experience peace. Now, Jesus himself in the great Sermon on the Mount would remind us to bless the peacemakers. These are remarkable individuals who have a way about them, a gift that is given to them that helps to bring people together for the purpose of reconciliation. So whether we're bringing a few people together or nations together, we thank God this day for those who are gifted to bring peace into this world, to end hostilities, to end strife and envy and all those things, and to give us an opportunity to once again be able to work together, live together, and love one another. Oh, I don't suppose we'll ever experience complete peace until Jesus returns. But there are those who are gifted and use their gifts every day to bring about reconciliation, to fill our hearts with renewed strength, because at least for a season, we can experience peace. Peace is a remarkable word. But never forget that the greatest source of our peace <clears throat> is Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came to this earth that we might experience peace in our hearts. Often when I think of peace, especially in this time of year, I'm reminded of some of the great Christmas carols that we normally would be singing right about now. And one of those that has long been a favorite of mine, even from the earliest days of my recollection, is that beautiful carol, Silent Night. I love those words. The very title alone brings images of peace to my mind. The very title alone brings images of stillness and quietness that all of us need to renew our hearts and lives. But there's one line in there that I've often turned to and found to be a great source of peace for me when it simply says, all is calm, all is bright. And at the very close of that verse, speaking of our Savior Jesus, it says, sleep in heavenly peace. 
I love that. I love that because every time I sing it, there's just a flood of joy that comes over my heart. There's just a flood of renewal that fills my spirit. And I rejoice that in those quiet times, God is there. And in those quiet times, I can hear the voice of God. Long ago, when Jesus was born, he wasn't born in a fine palace, but rather an obscure stable. But in that place, in that little town of Bethlehem that night, God gave us the greatest gift of all. He was the Prince of Peace, the giver of life. And today, I want to encourage you in this season, no matter what it looks like to you right now, to be reminded that Christ came into this world to give us peace. Peace in our hearts because we have the assurance that we are forgiven people, that we love God, and peace in our hearts because we can share with our brothers and sisters over and over again the joy that only he can bring. So God bless you in this special season of the year, and God bless you as we reflect on this beautiful word called peace. It is a word that brings much joy to our hearts. And never forget, the greatest source of peace we'll ever have in all of life is that of Jesus. Amen. As we hear this closing hymn, I'm going to invite you wherever you are, whether you're in your living room or sitting on the porch or wherever you may be, I'm going to invite you to pray right now. I want to invite you to take a moment in silence and just allow God's voice to speak to you wherever you may be. Free yourself from the distractions of life for just a moment. And I assure you, you will experience peace. Pray with me. Thank you, dear God, for this blessed day and for the privilege of sharing a message about peace. Lord, we've heard about hope. Now we've heard about peace. And soon we will learn about joy. But Lord, for now, Give us that quiet moment that we need to recoup, to be renewed, to be strengthened and encouraged by you. Thank you for the gift of peace and the gift of your Son, who is truly the author of peace. In Christ's name, amen.
Well, thank you all for joining us today. It's been a real blessing, and I trust and pray that you will have a wonderful week. God bless you in this holy season of the year, and as we draw ever closer to that day of celebrating Christ's birth, never forget that he is the Prince of Peace, the giver of life. And this day, he can give to all who are listening that peace that passes all understanding. Will you pray with me? Thank you, dear God, for another wonderful day and for the privilege of serving you. You are so good to us, and we are grateful for that. Thank you for hearing our prayers this day, and thank you for being a part of this service, guiding us in everything that's been done here this day. We pray a special blessing upon all those who have been a part of this service. And we thank you for those who are watching. And we thank you, Lord, that we are able to continue to serve you no matter what. In Christ's name, amen.